In terms of Revlon Girl, that was the other theater piece that I saw twice, and I could have probably seen it multiple times. <laughs> and um, what was very interesting for me is um, you guys were performing at um, Grahamstown Festival for um, for quite a period, and then in I don't know if it was in Johannesburg or somewhere else where yeah. you were almost performing for a month, and you had multiple performances a day. And you were saying to me that it was quite it was quite a highly emotional piece. Can you just give some background on what the story is about? And then how did you kind of like debrief yourself so that you don't get stuck in depression and sadness after playing such a highly emotional role? Yeah, I think that's a very important thing to look after yourself when you're doing such a difficult role. Um, so the play, The Revlon Girl, is actually a British play. It first ran in the UK off West End. And... It's about, it's set in 1966 in Wales after the Abfan disaster, which it's a true story. Um, a mine tip collapsed and took out half of a village and a school and it killed, I, I can't remember the exact number now, but it was over a hundred children. It was, if anyone has watched The Crown, <laughs> it's in an episode of The Crown, they address it. It was a, it was a very, very big deal. And I just went for that episode. I just watched that episode. <laughs> yeah. oh, sorry. I cried when I watched that episode. I did. <laughs> um, yeah. And this play looks at five women. So four are mothers who have lost children. And Revlon is the character I play. She's from Bristol and she comes to do a makeup demo with the ladies because they feel like they've let themselves go and they're just want a bit of lipstick in their life <laughs> and a lot of you know very deep things come out as these women are talking as they're trying to put on makeup and as Revlon is trying to do her presentation and we also find that Revlon has her own demons her own difficulties that she's carrying around with her and it's an amazingly beautiful piece also because it's five women which you don't see a lot and it looks at the strength of women and the strength and power in hope which is a wonderful thing but it is very difficult to do that every day for a month. <laughs> it so, is what did, to what, to what did you do to to cope? So, I know people hop on about it, but it's because it's true. You got to eat properly. You have to sleep properly. <laughs> drink lots of water, and it's something I and I did, which was difficult, was to prioritize myself <laughs> and to say no. And I think a, a lot of women especially are not great at that. I'm not great at that. I'm still learning. <laughs> but when you get to bed at midnight every night and you're crying every day and pouring out all of these emotions, you can't say yes to everything. You can't do 50 million other things for everyone else. You need to look after yourself. You need to say, actually, today I need to sleep in. I need to journal, which is another technique that is, okay. I think, people outside of the performing arts do know about it and some people do it but it's a really really great technique basically you just bleh, you just let everything out and you can journal journal about your day it's not it's not a diary it's not a dear diary thing it's just say everything in your head and get feelings out and it's very cathartic and no one else is going to see it i mean i've thrown away or deleted things i've typed it's just for you you know that, that those things that you think that you if anyone heard me think this or say this, oh my goodness, what they think of me. But it's great to just get that out. And it helps you emotionally just to debrief. And and then That's also quite amazing. I just mm -hmm. want to add something to that before you continue. Um, mm -hmm. sounds like did you read the artist's way? Because in the artist's way, she speaks about the morning pages, which she says, first thing mm -hmm. in the morning, just do um so so it sounds like you're typing, but she says you can also just write yeah. out three or four full pages and it's literally just dumping your thoughts yeah. because only after that will the beautiful creativity come out and you can start mm -hmm. noticing patterns of thoughts and that Absolutely. as well and i mean i keep saying her name but christine van here's my wonderful friend and collaborator from her journaling she created a theater piece that's gone on oh. to win multiple awards the one woman show because she found thinking and she refined that and made it into a play. Um, and, Incredible. You know, it's a really great, a great tool to just emotionally dump everything. And it's just for you, you know, you, I mean, for, for example, I'm, I'm not a person who swears a lot, 
But when I journal, there are quite a few swear words. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> if I've had a very emotional day or I've had a conflict, there's some swearing and there's never swearing in my real life. So <laughs> yes, it's, it's, it's really great and really cathartic. And yeah, and there are also other techniques um, to get out of character that help you as a performer that actually are really great if you have anxiety or you feel overwhelmed. Yeah. And they're really simple. Like one is just to hyper focus on something. So look out the window, look at a tree and try and count how many leaves are on the tree. And your brain kind of just switches over into that and hyper focuses onto that and forgets this emotional the trauma. other anxiety okay wow it's a hyper focus awesome mm -hmm. i've never heard of that yeah. uh, so find something around you that you can count basically count the panes of glass in the window count the blades of grass in front of you yeah hyper focus helps and i also really like breathing techniques so a really really simple one <laughs> is to just breathe in for a certain count and then breathe out for the same count so you breathe in and count one two three four five out one two three four five and then you just increase the numbers to as much as your lungs can take and it is it's kind of a form of that hyper focus as well it um you know because you just start focusing on that breathing and everything else kind of takes over and then you try and you know, you oxygenate your brain and your body a bit and you feel a lot calmer by the end of it, you know. Wow. So <laughs> so you were saying healthy eating? You were saying, were you saying exercise as well or do you need to, during that time, actually take a break from exercise to give you energy? <laughs> what have you yeah. found? I, I, I exercise a bit, I exercised a bit less, but I did still exercise because okay. it, was great. it releases endorphins. And I say this not being a fan of the gym, but I also do dancing and there, there's so many different forms of exercise you can do to bring you joy into, you know, um, I like Pilates as well. And as a performer as well, I think it's very important to look after your body. That's your tool. And for me in the Revlon Girl, my character sat down for about five minutes in the entire play. The rest, she was standing very straight in high heels. <laughs> so I actually needed to before and after performances, I did lots of stretches to help my back, my lower back, and that that's quite important. And I think performers are very aware of their bodies because it's our work. But a lot of people, even if you work at a laptop, it's so, I mean, now with COVID and with doing more writing, I found that even more, I need to stretch my neck. I need to move my body more so that it actually feels better. And uh, being physically fit is it's important you know you don't have to go run a marathon because i know i'm never going to run a marathon it's not, not my path in life but being healthy it just make when your body is happy your mind is happy definitely so find something that works for you it doesn't yeah. have to be the general gym thing it could actually be yeah. something fun and stretching as yeah. well so what kind of diet were you following during that period? Was it mostly salads, fresh stuff, or like, yes. you know, like well, with runners, they need to have pasta the night before and they're having yeah. Coke and bananas. Yeah. What, what, yeah. what is on the menu for an actress, you know? <laughs> <laughs> well, I think for me, for Marianthi, I, I love fruit and vegetables, and, but I think that's also how I grew up. I'm, I'm Greek and the Mediterranean diet is how I grew up. And love that's that. what I it's like I can't I can't do very high fat. My body doesn't like that. But then you get other people who like banting is it does it for them. And I think diet is very specific to each individual person. I mean, like I just look at, you know, my husband needs to eat a lot more meat. I I don't eat meat every day. I don't need to. My body wants fruit and vegetables. And especially when I'm working, especially when I'm on something intense like Revlon Girl. I'm very, very conscious of my diet. I, I, I make sure I eat my more than five fruit and vegetables a day because I just know if I don't, by the end of the day, I feel gross. So I would take food with me as well because I'm one of those people who needs to like eat a lot <laughs> and eat constantly. So I would take snacks, especially if we were doing multiple shows a day. I would eat before a little bit and then I'd eat after and, I, you know, just to, because my blood pressure will just go... Psh, so for so me, you that's don't become angry, you know, so yeah. that you can monitor your blood pressure. 